Good morning, this is Kel Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Sioux Falls police say two people have been indicted in connection with a homicide almost a year and a half ago. Both Antoine Richardson Jr. and Isaac Mohammed Wally face charges of aggravated assault. This is connected to the deadly shooting in the parking lot of Gilberto's along Minnesota Avenue in November 2021. A 37-year-old Sioux Falls man was killed in the shooting. Two of the men were injured. Police say the case was handed over to the South Dakota Attorney General's office. Two people are in custody in Minnesota in connection with catalytic converter thefts in Sioux Falls. A trooper in Jackson County, Minnesota, was trying to stop a vehicle when it sped away. The vehicle ended up crashing. Authorities say they found 22 catalytic converters inside the car. Further investigation revealed that about half of the catalytic converters came from the Vern Idy lot along Arrowhead Parkway in Sioux Falls. Right now, Demario Brown and Navelle Morris are behind bars in Minnesota. Authorities are trying to bring them back to Sioux Falls. Both men are from Chicago. Two men are behind bars following a drug investigation in Brookings. Police say authorities began investigating a cocaine distribution network in November, which led to a tip about a delivery in Brookings on Friday. Police say law enforcement saw two men leaving a home with a package. During a traffic stop, authorities discovered the package contained about nine ounces of cocaine. Police also found $1,300 in cash in the vehicle. Police arrested 43-year-old Michael Rodriguez Rivera and 25-year-old Malcolm Alvaro Rodriguez, both of Brookings, on drug charges. A Sioux Falls business has been robbed for the fourth time in the last year. The neighborhood market and restaurant in eastern Sioux Falls was broken into early yesterday morning. The door was shattered and most of their vape supplies stolen. The last break-in at the market happened three months ago. I really don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I don't think that we should be treated this way. You know, it makes me feel to the point that I want to leave the states and go somewhere safer if we cannot be safe in this area, you know. Digital reporter Jasmine Jackson spoke with the owners about the frequent attacks and their growing frustration and fear with this Kelloland.com original online now. Sioux Falls Animal Control is asking for the public's help in finding a dog that bit a teen by the Sanford Hospital. Officials say it happened around 4 o'clock Friday afternoon. A 13-year-old girl was walking along South Grange Avenue when she met a man walking a dog on a leash. As they passed each other, the dog bit her on the leg. The man did not share any contact information at the time. He's described as in his late 20s with blonde hair and was wearing a tie-dye shirt. The dog is described as a white beagle mix. If you have any information, you're asked to call Sioux Falls Animal Control. Coming up later this morning, Sioux Falls and Minnehaha County officials release last year's crime statistics for the city. Minnehaha County State's Attorney Daniel Hager, Sheriff Mike Milstead, Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Tenhaken, and Police Chief John Toom will be there to review the stats and compare them to previous years. Gets underway at 1030 this morning at the Law Enforcement Center. Now let's send it over to meteorologist Scott Mont for a look at our forecast. Good morning, Scott. All right, good morning, everybody. We are following snow in western, central, and north central, eventually northeastern South Dakota as we do go through the morning and into this afternoon. Get used to this type of forecast as we go through this week. Temperatures will remain well below average. We'll continue with this winter weather as well. We'll have more details on your forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. More girls may feel inspired to get involved in science and engineering. On Monday, about 800 eighth graders attended the Women in Science event at Southeast Technical College. The event highlighted opportunities in science, technology, engineering, and math. Girls from schools across southeastern South Dakota attended. The Octane Inc. Snowcross National wrapped up this weekend at Hughes Speedway, where professional snowmobile riders from around the world competed. It drew in lots of racing fans, including a national television crew from Sweden. They're filming a documentary on snowmobile racing and why Scandinavians compete in the United States. Let's talk to them about uh, why they are doing snowcross, what's like the big deal in the USA, why they come here from Scandinavia to, to compete. They say racing in the United States is a big jump for most riders as the competition is more intense and the tracks tend to be geared toward catching more air, and that's good for the racers. 16 games down, two to go at the Summit League Basketball Tournament.
A lot goes into making the tournament happen. Summit League Assistant Commissioner for Communications, Ryan Powell, says an event like this takes a team effort. It takes a village to pull this thing off. It's uh, a lot of different moving parts, a lot of different groups and organizations. From live reports to highlights to reaction, we have Championship Tuesday covered for you. The SDSU women play Omaha at 1, while NDSU meets Oral Roberts in the men's title matchup tonight at 8. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, as we add up the weather this week, a couple of things to think about. Let's uh, look at our snow potential through the end of the week. So today, this is just an ongoing total through 4 o'clock today. And I would say that the numbers, as we kind of overlay at least through the end of the afternoon and the end of the evening, there's going to be a strip of accumulations running from Pine Ridge and the southwest going through fill up and then up toward Mobridge. Now there are warnings in this area in the northwest where the amounts can definitely be in excess of at least four to five inches total. And obviously with a big March, you always get higher numbers, localized numbers, it'll be more. Now, East of the James Valley, not much today, but tonight there's going to be some snow in the northeast. We pick up some new numbers there. I think Sioux Falls, the next story for the southeast will be some Nuisance amounts of mixed precipitation that'll include drizzle and freezing drizzle chances. Uh, given the setup here for tomorrow morning, I would be on the alert for that. And then we expect some steadier snows to pick up across the region Wednesday night into Thursday. This is an ongoing tally. So this is not necessarily all falling on Thursday, although for Sioux Falls, arguably we could get the vast majority of the percentage of that four to eight during that time frame. And then Saturday is a whole nother story. There are some potential areas of new snow there. So just keeping track of it one piece at a time. This is for today. You see the area highlighted in blue. That's our winter weather advisory for the Black Hills. Winter storm warning for the northwest and north central. The new winter storm watch coming into play for much of Minnesota and northern Iowa. That's Thursday. That could easily get expanded. We'll continue to watch how that headline plays out during that time frame. Okay, so things to think about this week. Uh, chances of snow, you know, quite a few of them. If we look at our seven-day forecast, you can see we've got more of them coming. Uh, the Sioux Falls area, the best chance will be Thursday. Friday's kind of a leftovers day. Saturday represents a new system, a new wave that could produce snow, but a little harder to say exactly how that's going to play out just yet. Uh, just given all of this kind of coming at us in little chunks and pieces, uh, not necessarily huge storm, but it's just kind of a parade here of things that can impact the weather and each and every piece can obviously deliver some road issues. We've seen a lot of that already this week in Aberdeen. We're likely going to pick up more snow tomorrow uh, into tomorrow night and also on Thursday. Pier, I would certainly highlight uh, Thursday as a day where some snows are a little bit more likely, but even today we've got an advisory here in Pierce, so we uh, can't ignore all of these uh, uh, little elements one by one and Rapid City too. It's all snowing today in the west and then there'll be plenty more coming for Thursday into early Friday. Check out details, a lot more online at Kelloland.com.